Thanks very much. Um, thanks for the introduction and thanks also for the invitation to speak here today. So, as mentioned, my name is Gary O'Connell. I'm the catchments manager for the border region within Law Pro. Uh, I'm going to talk on the progress that we've made in the past few years within the areas for action, um, some of the data sharing procedures that we have in place, and then the referrals process that we use um, to refer back those pressures that we're finding through the, the, the work that we're doing on the ground. So, just really quickly, a, a bit of a background to the structure of Law Pro. It might be more of a reminder for people now at this stage. We might, be, we might be well enough known at this stage, but we're a national shared service working alongside all 31 local authorities in the country, with uh, Tipperary and Kilkenny being the two lead local authorities. So we have a director of service, Mr. Carol Cashin, um, from Tipperary County Council. And back in 2016, there was a communities team put in place, which was made up of 13 community water officers overseen by three regional coordinators. Uh, and their key role, really, uh, was to encourage that community engagement and encourage people to take you know, a place of value and an appreciation on their water resources. So they're actively working uh, to protect and restore all waters on a national level. So then two years after that, uh, the catchments team were brought into being. So this is the, there were 30 catchment scientists overseen by five catchment managers and then one overall program lead. And the key role of the catchments assessment team really is to build the scientific evidence base through assessment processes to help identify the right measure in the right place um, to improve water quality focused in these priority areas for action. So you'll hear that tagline, you've heard it a few times over the past couple of days about the right measure in the right place. And that's the, that's the approach that we're taking as well. Uh, furthermore, we have the Blue Dot program as well, which you're probably all familiar with. So we have an extra role for a Blue Dot scientist within Law Pro. And then we have our invaluable six head office staff as well, which uh, they need a hat tip as well, given they keep us all right for uh, health and safety, communications, IT, and general HR procedures. So. Um, those PEAs that I mentioned, the priority areas for action, uh, just an overview of those. There were 189 of those identified in the, the second cycle river basin management plan for local catchment assessment work. And these were largely built on evidence put together by EPA through the characterization process. Uh, there were various selection criteria for those, such as starting in the headwaters and they see benefits downstream, uh, addressing multiple pressures perhaps at once, and also building on improvements that might have been seen in recent times as a result of the work that, that would have went on in those catchments beforehand. So, as I say, all 31 local authorities and relevant public bodies were involved in that characterization process through workshops across the country. It then allowed us ourselves to prioritize our own work plans and how we might address these, and it led us to develop the step-by-step -step process, um, which will go into in a bit more detail here. So the first step in that was is our desk studies, uh, assessing all the water quality data sets that are available, trying to get an idea of the local engagement that was already active within the, the areas. Um, the output of our desk studies, I suppose, has developed the, this conceptual understanding on the source pathway receptor framework. Um, the next step then is to get out under the catchment, uh, get active in the, the communications front there. So between public meetings, uh, public engagement, farmers' meetings, and then maybe press campaigns in the local, the local media as well. That kind of gave the communities you know, a heads up to our, our intentions to get out in the catchment, uh, followed up then by our kick sampling, our chemistry sampling, which was ultimately to identify the cause of these significant pressures that were highlighted. Um, the next important step in that then was the, the measures themselves and getting agreement in those, so discussions with the relevant, uh, the relevant implementing bodies and then the, the eventual outputs of reporting all that back through our, our action plan reports. So just in terms of progress itself, out of those 189 areas, uh, we have made progress on 183 desk studies for those, with 137 of them finalized and uploaded to the app. Um, I'll talk a wee bit more about that in terms of data sharing as we go down through as well. Uh, public meetings have been held in 164 of these, of these priority areas for action. Just to note that there are a number of those which might not necessarily need a public meeting, depending on the pressure that was picked up, uh, or if we sort of took the, the, that community engagement through other channels and sort of wrote in the coattails of other projects that might have been active in the area. And then the, the farmers' meetings, which Pat Murphy would have touched on yesterday, led out in Biasap, but there have been 137 of those carried out as well. Um, in terms of the, the LCA progress itself, we have been active in 161 of these catchments, so our, our local catchment assessment, our field work on our boots in the ground and in the rivers, uh, in 161. We have the action plan started for 100 of those. Uh, as, again, as Pat would have mentioned, there are referrals, active referrals in 122 of these priority areas for action. And just the numbers of referrals to date to give you an idea of the amount of work that has gone into those, with 486 that are active, 
that's kind of updating on a daily basis as people uh, you know, update their trackers and, and we get caught up on those. So almost 500 of those progressed so far. Um, another one of these dangerous slides. So I'll just uh, caveat it by saying it's not necessarily an exhaustive list. Uh, hopefully I've got the National Federation of Grip Water Schemes in there for Sean. Um, but, but it's just a snapshot really of some of, the, some of the bodies that we deal with in terms of our data sharing. Uh, we've talked for a number of years now about breaking down the silo thinking and, and promoting joined up thinking. So um, we, it's a two-way street really in terms of that data sharing that we share our findings back and we, we get the baseline data back in from the, from the implementing bodies. Um, the referrals process then, it can obviously be a bit more sensitive given that we're dealing with case-by-case -case scenarios there. So there are GDPR sensitivities involved in that. Uh, the publication of those then, we, we've pushed those to the WFD app. Uh, and then eventually the sort of public facing end of that as well, the EPA's catchments.ie website. And we've already done that through the publication of our desktop summaries, um, a process that we carried out towards the end of last year. So the, there is an intention for ourselves to publish the full versions of our, um, of our desk studies and our eventual LCA reports and our findings from our field work on that. Uh, we have our own website's gone under a major revamp over the last 12 to 18 months or so. And we've already started that process now of getting the full versions of our reports up there. Just to note, the WFD gives specific credence, I suppose, to the, the public as a vital stakeholder in water. Uh, and it's important that we promote you know, the transparency as best we can there and get as much information out there as we can. Uh, social media then, of course, is uh, just part of the, the modern age. Uh, we've really increased our presence and our promotion there on social media as well through our communications department and uh, Alan Walsh there, who's been very active on that front. Uh, we really noticed the benefits of that through the third cycle consultation process that we went through there back in February and March this year. So going back to the referrals process, um, just to give a breakdown of the different organizations that these referrals would have went to, and I'll go into these each in a wee bit more detail in further slides. Uh, understandably, the bulk of the referrals that we've made and the bulk of the pressures that we're finding are relating to agriculture. So 380 of the referrals out of that near 500 number um, They've gone to the ASAP program and they're at various stages of, of progress now from the initial engagement to the feedback loops that we've developed. Um, we have a number that have gone the Irish water via the EPA as the regulatory authority and they're largely relating to the urban wastewater treatment plants. Uh, we've a number gone back to the local authorities as well, largely relating to uh, industrial discharges and septic tanks perhaps as pressures and then Another body of work that we've undertaken in the last uh, kind of 6 to 12 months is promoting the referrals process with the Forest Service as well. Uh, so we have a number of those in train as well. Just to go into a bit more detail on, on the different types of referrals, so the ag referrals that I mentioned that we submit back to the ASAP program, there's, we're dealing with huge numbers here. Um, you know, that, that 380 referrals, we could be talking about thousands of herd numbers and thousands of farmers, so it's a it's a big uh, task for us to narrow that down and focus that as much as we can for the advisors in question. The, what we do then through the process is through feedback loops and different draft referral stages. It allows us to kind of agree measures with the ASAP advisors that might be most suitable. And they come under these three main categories of source control, pathway interception, and mobilization control. We've developed a number of tracker systems then as well, uh, which are great for the optics, if nothing else, that we have a nice colourful diagram here, but it really allows us to kind of monitor the progress of those. And as I say, the, the likes of the feedback is really important on that front. Not just the positive feedback for the measures that, that are engaged with, but maybe the, the less engaged ones as well, so that we can take that going forward um, and try and work out how we might, a, might address that in the future. Uh, just an example of some of these in action. So we had one, the Glen Carrick 10 water body in southwest Donegal. It was within one of these PEAs. And at the characterization stage, there were agricultural impacts noted, um, potentially as a result of toxic impacts from sheep dip. So this was backed up through our own death study then when we uh, closer an analyzed the Q surveys and we seen some of those infamous slash zeros appended onto the scores. Um, so we got out and active in the catchment in August 2020. And unfortunately, the, the kick sample that was undertaken by the Law Pro staff was a completely depauperate sample. Uh, the small streams impact score that we used there was a 1.6, so really poor, really poor indications there. There was a number of these surveys carried out to narrow down where the source of this toxicity might be coming from. And then we, we estimated that there was over seven kilometers of the river where this kind of wipeout had, had, had occurred. So a restore referral was put in place to the ASAP advisor in the area. Uh, and this was largely focused around the behavioral change and trying to promote you know, best practice when dealing with these agricultural chemicals. 
So we were delighted then when we went back a year later, almost a year later in June there in 21, um, with a really good sample kicked at that point. Uh, it indicated a really good SSIS score from ourselves, and this was backed up by the EPAQ survey, which had just been done a few weeks earlier as well, and a return to good, indicative of good ecological status there in a Q4. So, um, another one was the deal, spatially targeted buffers EIP. So we have um, a catchment, a PEA in the southwest region, uh, the upper deal. Intensively agriculture, uh, intensively farmed on high risk areas. So these pollution impact potential maps are one of our vital tools at the death study stage for this. Um, this kind of led, you know, we, we identified the phosphate and sediment where issues throughout the catchment. So Law Pro and ASAP with the, the Valley Highway Development Company, they were successful in getting funding for one of these many EAPs. Um, so it, it built on recommendations of a paper from Donald Daly last year on the effectiveness of the, the positioning of these, uh, these buffer zones. And they identified too many catchments there. And as I say, Law Pro and ASAP are just two of the project partners along the development company, um, Donald Daly himself, OPW and AFI. So uh, the kind of results of this led to the ASAP and Chagask, the Chagask and the, the co-op advisors. They were able to engage with over 90% of the, the landowners within the two catchments. Um, they were able to agree locations where they could put in measures, such as these, these buffer zones, uh, focused on the highest risk areas, really, in terms of critical source areas, and the, um, the flow delivery paths as well. So the Law Pro Science team were able to do the, this kind of baseline nutrient monitoring, and they installed auto samplers. They'll follow this up now. They test the, the impact or the benefits, I suppose, uh, as a result of these measures that have gone in through our SSAS scores and, and further chemistry sampling. So another good news story there through through the ASAP service um, and the referrals process. Uh, I think Pat touched on this yesterday as well, just in the catchment referrals for nitrogen. So I'll not go into this in much detail, but it was driven largely the concern, I suppose, arising from the, the catchments of concern report last year. These nitrate catchments in the southwest, or sorry, southeast, um, the, the kind of well-drained areas where this would be more of an issue. So it allowed us to put in, put, uh, put in a process where we can make these referrals uh, on this basis. And you can see there, we, we had over 1,200 water bodies referred from this process alone. They've broken down into these, these three or four different priority categories. Um, and we were delighted that you know, the, the resources being provided now as well with the commitment for the additional staff, as Pat touched on yesterday, uh, to address these issues. So, Looking at the EPA and Irish water referrals that we made, so you probably can't make that out, but we have a, quite a detailed decision tree there um, that we follow at the death study stage. We use that as a starting point to try and identify if there's potential impact from, uh, from the, the wastewater treatment plants. We, it's a, you know, an in-depth analysis. We're looking at the assimilative capacity. Uh, we're looking at the, the loadings from the catchment and from different sectors within the catchment. We then obviously get out in the ground uh, through our LCA processes to determine if that impact is found on the ground as well. Uh, and then that referral is eventually made back, uh, back via the EPA, ends up with Irish water, and I suppose the positive outcome we get from that is that it was touched on yesterday by a couple of speakers as well. You know, if there's any potential to influence future investment programs and the prioritisation of funding, then by all means we're, we're happy to support that. I should note that that can go both ways as well. There are instances where we would have ruled out uh, wastewater treatment plants as significant pressures based on that loadings analysis that we would do from the different sectors. So it can go both ways. Uh, I mentioned the forestry referrals that we've put a lot of work into this in, in recent months, really. They're broken down into these two main categories of the restore referrals and the protect referrals. So the restore referrals are obviously when the forestry has been detected as having a significant impact currently on the water quality. Uh, and this would be identified through, through our LCA work. And then the protect referrals, they can come from two different aspects, I suppose, either evidence found at the death study stage that a potential previous decline was a result of forestry activities, or evidence from, from our field work uh, that there is you know, an increased future risk, maybe. There could be drains cutting through, uh, cutting through buffer zones. Um, a lot of legacy issues, I suppose, with forestry. So we, uh, we would submit the protect referral then in that sense. And it just allows that to be placed on file and put on record by the Forest Service. They've committed to keep those at the forefront of their mind whenever they're assessing new license applications when they come in. Um, so as I say, the, the inspector then can add any specific conditions based on the, the additional measures that we've recommended uh, or that we, that we might discuss. We don't necessarily recommend measures. We would, we would accept that the Forest Service would be best placed to recommend the measures themselves but it allows them to consider that whenever it comes to applying conditions to any future licenses. 
Um, and then uh, the, 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 there's the option then, I suppose, going back to feedback loops and, and collaboration and joined up thinking. There's the option there for that to be fed back to ourselves from the Forest Service. So the local authority referrals then that I touched on, um, largely industrial discharges have, been, uh, have formed the basis of um, the referrals that we've made back to the local authorities so far. That allows us to provide the evidence base really for the local authorities to take any further action that they might need and we let them follow their own, their own processes then from that point. But it could be the likes, there are instances where there's been section 12s issued then to, to prevent any future discharges in the meantime until perhaps times as such measures are put in place uh, to kind of remediate that discharge. Just the other general incidents that we would report back as well are general pollution incidences such as the fly tipping and that. Um, and then the other category that we would largely deal with is the septic tanks and the pressures that we would detect from them through, through again our LCA processes and our field work. So we have a, similar to the, the urban wastewater treatment plant decision tree, we have a decision tree for how we assess the impact of the septic tanks. Um, and you know, if we're picking up that impact upstream and downstream in the river, then it's a case that that's the evidence that we can provide back to the local authority um, to take measures. And we would often support that then. There is the, the septic tanks grant available, obviously. So we're, we're in a position where we can provide a letter of support for the eligibility of that grant. Uh, not that we assess septic tanks directly, but it's more so the impact of the stream that we might pick up on those. Um, and then, uh, you know, the, there, are, there is potential there for those type of findings to influence potential future inspection plans uh, on a, on a risk-based approach, really. Just to touch on nature-based solutions, I couldn't really get through a presentation without mentioning it. We've heard it a few times over the past couple of days, and, you know, we would be advocates of it, and they come back to the right measure in the right place, and often at the right time as well. So it gives us a chance to discuss that with local authorities, either when it comes to future planning or the remediation of existing discharges and potential mitigation measures for those. Um, this is my last slide. I just think it's important to give the Blue Dots catchment program uh, just a quick, uh, a quick bit of the, the spotlight, really. Um, it's really important for us within Law Pro. So we have, just to touch on the referrals process and give an overview of how that's faring out within specifically in the Blue Dots. So we have 64 blue dots across 45 of the priority areas for action. Um, we've made referrals in a number of those, 36 of the water bodies uh, have had referrals placed on them. And 20 of those have been to the ASAP program. So the, it, it kind of ties in, we have 11 referrals to the Forest Service, uh, a couple there are still in draft, and then a number for other bodies then as well, largely the local authorities based on the likes of some of the industrial discharges that I mentioned earlier. So it gives that kind of overview, it, it, you know, it's following the trend of the referrals process. Uh, it mightn't necessarily completely align with the, the, the slight differences in significant pressures within uh, the blue dots, but it does show that the, you know, the work that we're doing and the processes that we're following, they're all moving in steps in the right direction. So just very quickly in summary, uh, we feel like we have a lot of progress made to date. Uh, we accept that you know, there, there have been challenges over the last couple of years. Um, we feel like we've overcome them, so we're probably in a good position to overcome whatever might be thrown at us in the coming years. Uh, we have a significant expansion going into the third cycle, the, the areas for action that have been highlighted in the third cycle, so not just for ourselves, but for other implementing bodies as well to take the lead. Um, so we aim, you know, as part of the catchments team, we aim to continue building a scientific evidence base that will inform those appropriate actions and measures, and then on the community side of the house then, we'll continue to promote that behavioural change through your community engagement and through your public participation. So that's about all from me. Um, thanks for your time and I look forward to questions later.